Okay, Fred, how you been? I've been okay. How are you feeling about your performance in the class? I'm okay. I've kind of changed my mind a little bit about medical school. Really? What are you thinking now? Well, uh, I'm thinking more along the lines of uh, maybe majoring in chemistry and doing like a, a graduate school. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah, I, I highly recommend graduate school. Not a lot of debt involved in graduate school. Exactly. And then I just don't want to find myself in a lot of debt. Now, you're going to make a lot of money if you go in to be a medical doctor, right? Yeah, I know I make a lot of money. Um, the other things I'm concerned about is the long hours. Yeah. If you go into graduate school, there are long hours, but, you know, generally, um, you can work around those pretty well, especially if you make your good decisions. Well, good. That's interesting. It'll be interesting. You'll have to keep in touch with me and let me know where you end up. Yeah, I will. All right. So we're going to talk about what we call the quantum mechanical atom. Now, essentially what that means is that when we get really small, when we get down to the properties of atoms, uh, when things are really small, it doesn't behave the way we would kind of expect it to. All right? And we get a lot of our um, models kind of um, falling apart. All right? Uh, and so we're going to, to, to talk about that. Um, but the problem is if we don't, understand, I mean, you know, we might feel uncomfortable, like, eh, don't mess with my model. I understand what the atom looks like. I don't want to change that. But if we don't address that, if we don't change that, then we can't answer some questions. And if we can't answer those questions, we can't improve um, what's going on. All right. Um, so understanding the quantum mechanics of how atoms behave allow us to take advantage of the, their properties. And, and a lot of, a lot of special equipment, GPS, um, your cell phones, a lot of different things rely on this fundamental understanding. So we're going to um, spend some time and talk about it. Okay, um, to do this, we first have to have a general understanding of what light is, all right? We say that light travels in waves, travels in waves, okay? And some properties of waves, well, we have the wave's length right? How long it is from the, the top of the wave to the next top of the wave, right? That's one whole wavelength. We have the frequency. That's essentially saying how frequent the um, light goes, the wave goes up and down, how frequently it goes up and down, okay? Um, so uh, the wavelength and the frequency, they relate to each other because we also know something about light's speed. Have you ever heard of the speed of light? Yeah, I know. I've heard that things can't travel at the speed of light. Well, light travels at the speed of light. Uh, okay, yeah. But, like, you can't get a car going the speed of light. Okay. So, you've heard that before in different classes. That's good. Um, the speed of light is 3.8 meters per second. And because that's another property of light, all light travels at the speed of light, right? then we get this interesting relationship between wavelength, frequency, and the speed of light, okay? And that is um, that, oops, the speed of light, C, is equal to the wavelength, that's uh, Greek letter L, lambda, times mu, which is the uh, frequency, frequency. So the wavelength times its frequency equals the speed of light. And now, Speed of light, the units for the speed of light are meters per second, meters over seconds. The speed, or the frequency, or sorry, the units for wave's length are meters. And frequency is in units of how many times something happens per second. So frequency is per second. So mu is in meters. Frequency is in per seconds or one over seconds. So frequency times speed of light, the unit, sorry, frequency times wavelength, the units will be meters per second. And that is the speed of light. All right, those are the units for the speed of light. Okay, very good. So um, because of this, we get a relationship between the energy of uh, 
a, a frequency of electromagnetic energy and its wavelength, right? We get a relationship between the wavelength and the energy or the frequency in the energy. Um, the long waves are low in energy, but the short waves are high in energy. And that's because they go up and down more frequently. So here is an example of a wavelength of e electromagnetic energy. Now, it's better to say electromagnetic energy as opposed to light, because when we talk about light shining on us from the sun or from the um, uh, light bulb, light is also shining on us in the form of uh, radio waves. Radio waves are the same material as um, light. Radio is the same as light? That's right. And Wi-Fi is generated over radio waves, right? Uh, microwaves use this same electromagnetic energy. We just call it light because it's what we're most familiar with. And there is a small spectra here. See this little spectra right here? Between uh, 400 and 700 nanometers, that's the wavelength. So let's say this is uh, 700 nanometers. That is um, a color. It's a color. It's actually... Uh, red, and our eyes can respond to that wavelength of electromagnetic energy, and that's why we call it light, okay? We don't call radio waves light, right? We call them uh, electromagnetic energy, and so we should really refer to all wavelengths of electromagnetic energy, regardless of what it is, as electromagnetic energy. But you'll, you know, we can call it light too, if it feels more comfortable for a while. So I have this photon of electromagnetic energy, and here's another photon of electromagnetic energy, okay? Let's say that these two photons are going to have a race, and here is the, the finish line for their race. Um, which one of these uh, photons is going to travel the fastest? Which one's going to go faster? The, the 700 or what's the other one? Oh, let's give this one a value of 400 nanometers. That's our are violet. So this is red light and this is violet light. Which one's going to travel the fastest? They start at the same time? Yeah, here they are. They started there and they go to the other end. Oh, the 400? It has more energy, right? High energy? Okay, so that's the thing. We said that the speed of light is a fixed number, right? Oh, so do they tie? That's right, they tie. They both travel at the same speed. And if they're both going at the same speed, then this one, which has a shorter wavelength, it has to go up and down more frequently. All right? Higher frequency. It's going up and down more frequently, and that's a shorter wavelength. Or, yes, shorter wavelength. Okay? So, all sorts of different um, forms of electromagnetic energy that we have here. Right, we have radio waves we talked about, X-rays over here on the higher energy uh, level. Um, we want to be very well familiar with our wavelengths between 400 and 700 nanometers because those wavelengths are the electromagnetic wavelengths uh, of light, and so we want to, to kind of be more familiar with them. Um, and I'm going to help you become familiar with them, hopefully, if this makes any sense to you. Um, the one thing you do need to memorize, and I'm not a big fan of memorization, but this thing you need to memorize is that the wavelength of red light and or the range of our visible wavelength is between 400 and 700 nanometers. So 400 and 700 nanometers, whoops, nanometers, is our uh, visible uh, range. Our eyes, the pro our proteins, enzymes in our eyes respond to these wavelengths of electromagnetic energy. Can you imagine if you could see all the wavelengths? It would be, you would see everything. There's, you know, so many different wavelengths of electromagnetic energy passing through a room at a given point. It would be, uh, you know, too much to see, right? Um, so what does the nanometers mean in 400 to 700 nanometers? That's the wave's length. That's right, 400 to 700 nanometers. Which is higher in energy, 400 or 700 nanometers? 400 is higher in energy. Now that sometimes feels counterintuitive because you want to say higher number, higher energy, right? So yeah, that's right. Lower wavelength, higher energy. Because energy relates 
inversely proportional to wavelength, but it relates directly proportional to, in, um, uh, to frequency, how frequently the wave goes by, right? How frequently it goes up and down, sorry. So, um, frequency is what relates directly to energy, right? Okay, so um, what colors do you think are 400 and 700 nanometers uh, of wavelength? I mean, what color of light do you think 400 and 700 is? Oh, I can't remember. Can you go back? Well, let's see if we can remember without that uh, past information. Let's see um, if we can think about this. Now, there are some... If this is the, the visible range of light, 400 and 700 nanometers, there are wavelengths that are smaller than 400, let's say uh, 200 nanometers down here, and this is 900 nanometers up here. To the, to the right and left in the spectra, depending on how you kind of hold it, you can flip it around or whatever. So to either side of the visible range, the 400 to 700 nanometers range, there are other wavelengths of electromagnetic energy. And uh, one region to one side is called ultraviolet, and the other one is called infrared. And notice the range here, these, these edges, I told you that one was red and one was purple, one was violet. And um, ultraviolet is the side that's closest to the violet, and infrared is the side that's closest to the infrared side uh, or um, edge of the visible wavelength. Now, do you know anything about ultraviolet light? Uh, yeah, you get sunburns. Okay, sunburns. Ultraviolet light is dangerous, right? It can, you know, do a lot of damage to your skin. What about infrared light? Do you know anything about that? Uh, no, I haven't heard of that much. It's because it's not very dangerous, all right? So, that being said, does that help you think about which side is ultraviolet and which side is infrared? No, not really. Well, what's more dangerous? Infrared. Which one do you think has more energy? Infrared or ultraviolet? Uh, I guess ultraviolet has more energy. That's why it's more dangerous. That's right. So which would have more energy? 200 nanometer wavelengths or uh, 900 nanometer wavelengths? More energy? Yeah. Which would have more? 200 nanometers. That's right. So that would make this what? Ultraviolet or infrared? Ultraviolet. Very good. UV, I call it. And this one, IR. So that means 400 is what color? Uh, how do we know that? Well, we said that ultraviolet was next to the violet. Oh, yeah, so that's violet. 400 is violet, 700 is red. Very good. And now that is the information that I want you to always remember. That becomes very valuable for a lot of different reasons in life. And uh, you can remember yourself by simply recognizing that people are always talking about the danger associated with ultraviolet light. Okay? All right. Good job.